all to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. May that be your prayer tonight as we come together for this time of our Bible study. And our trust is that God Almighty, who have pulled us together from right across wherever it is that you are joining us tonight, we pray that he will bring understanding, wisdom, and grace to, un to, to hear him upon each and every one of us in Jesus' name. I'd like to welcome you um, as you join us this evening as we continue in our study this month um, about our children. And tonight, the topic of our study is to remind ourselves that children are for signs and wonders. Amen. I want you to say to yourself, my children, say it to yourself, my children are for signs and for wonders. That is what we know. That is what the Bible tells us. And we want to just dive in to see and learn more about this topic. And we can see how God will enlighten us further on in Jesus' name. We pray that understanding and wisdom will come for us tonight. And we will be able to know what it is, the treasure that children are for us. Amen. Let me start today's teaching by announcing that children are not only for signs and for wonders, children are actually signs and wonders themselves. It is one thing for you to be made for something, it is another for you to actually be that thing that is made. I want you to know and believe very strongly that not only can you see signs and wonders being rough and being delivered through our children, the way they are made, the way they are created, the way they are given to us, the way that they came into our lives, the avenue in which God used to give them to us in ways that is more than one, two, or three, you'll find out that they are wonders. They are miracles. They are signs that could only have been done and carried out by God himself. And this reminds me a few weeks ago, um, Pastor Tony shared with us a scripture in 1 Timothy 4.12. And I'll quickly read this. 1 Timothy 4. 12 it says don't let anyone think less of you because you are young be an example to all believers in what you say in the way you live in your love your faith and your purity this was apostle paul talking to timothy and guiding him as to how he's maturing into adulthood. And Apostle Paul was writing this epistle to him, telling him that he should not allow anybody to treat him like a child. Now, this is very instructive, and that's why I thought to start on this note tonight. As a result of being parents to our children, we easily look down on them saying they are children. As a result of the fact that we are the one who brought them to this world, perhaps we think we capitalize on their vulnerability and we discount them. Paul was saying to Timothy, and in fact he was instructing all of those who are children, even today, even your children, he says, don't allow anybody to think less about you. Don't allow anybody to do that to you. When you look down on people, when you treat people as though they are, they don't know what they're doing, when you think about people as though, you know what, they do not, you know, they, could, they don't have a say per se in what is going on, you are devaluing their lives. And Apostle Paul was saying to Timothy, he said, don't allow anybody to treat you like a child. And, you know, this, this goes a long way to remind us also 
about that episodes that happened between Jesus, a 12-year-old, and his earthly parents, Joseph and Mary. And the Bible records that they had gone on their usual pilgrimage and prayer, you know, gathering in Jerusalem. And when it was time to go home, the Bible records that they couldn't find him. In fact, they have traveled three days before they noticed that Jesus was not around with them on the journey. And they panicked. Of course, anybody will panic. Anybody will panic thinking, what have we done? We've just lost our only child. We've just lost, you know, our prime child. And they were wondering, what are we going to do? And they journeyed three days back to go and look for him. Let's look a little bit in that scripture. The Bible says in verse 45, it says, When they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. Three days later, they finally discovered him in the temple, sitting among religious teachers, listening to them and asking questions. The best way to find something, the best way to know that you know something is to ask questions. You can only ask questions when you've understood what is being said and what is being discussed. When you understand, questions will arouse in you and you'll be able to ask questions. Jesus started to ask professors and leaders of theology questions. Verse 47 says, all who heard him were amazed. And his at his understanding and his answers. As he was asking, he was giving them answers. He was looking at them and he was at their level, in fact, above their level, because that was how he amazed them. He was beyond their comprehension. The same way your children, even though they are children, they could be above you, they could think and reason at levels that you never could have imagined, they could amaze you most of the time. If you ask two people who treat children, either in nurseries or in primary school, they will tell you the intelligent question, the unassuming question they will ask you because they are thinking and relating at a level that we never imagined they could be at. Jesus was doing the same. Verse 48 said, this is the person that is talking to professors and teachers of theology. His, his parents arrived in verse 48. His, present, his parents didn't know what to think. Son, his mother said to him, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantic, searching for you everywhere. As if he was lost. As if he didn't know what he was doing. As if he didn't know where he was. But listen to what he answered them. Just like Paul was saying to Timothy. Don't allow anybody to treat you like a child. Verse 49. But why did you need to search? Why did you need to look for me? Why did you need to be frantic? Why did you need to be afraid? Why did you need to think that I was lost? Why did you need to think I didn't know what I was doing? Why are you treating me like a child, he said. He asked them, didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? Verse 50 said, but they didn't understand what he meant. Then he returned to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. He wasn't a rascal boy. He was doing what he was meant to do. But you know what? As he was obeying them, as he was obedient to his parents, he was also adhering, heeding to the ultimate purpose of his life, which is to fall in line with the purpose of God for his life. Listen, you must know how to look after your children in the sense that you want them to obey you. Listen to them. When they are obeying you, also give them room to align to the eternal purpose of God for their lives. Do not deprive them. Do not cut them away. Do not make them be separated from the very purpose that God made them for. If you do that, you destroy them. Apostle Paul said, let nobody, don't allow anybody to treat you like a child. 
This is very important. This is very crucial. Another example that we should remember is Haman, that wicked guy. Who would have died? I mean, I mean, um, the, the, the major, the ma Naaman, Naaman the major in the army, Naaman. He would have died a leper. He would have died a leper if not that he decided to listen to the counsel of the people around him to obey the wisdom of that little girl, the slave child that lived in his house. Initially, he discounted that was, what do you know about how to treat leper? What do you know about how to, you know, get forgiveness? What do you know about how to redeem oneself? What do you know about how to become, you know, how to get healing? You don't know anything. I've been, you know, a, 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 a general in the army and I know what it takes. But he was counseled rightly that the child's counsel might just be the only reason why you can survive. I want you to know that the reason why children are around us sometimes is so that we can hear the voice of God. It's so that God can speak into our lives. It's so that they can be relevant in the scheme of things. So do not in any way discount them. Let them know that you value them, that you appreciate them, that they have a place, that they are welcome, that in fact, all that you are doing is for their purpose because you are doing it so that they can have a good start in life. Don't look down on your children. They are a bundle of miracle. Signs are pointers to the place, to a place or an event. If you look at signs outside, when you're going to somewhere, you're going to be looking for signs that will direct you and give you, you know, some leads to say turn right or turn left or take the next uh, exit or do this or do that. Signs are to lead you somewhere. They give you some instruction that if you follow them, it will show you the event you're going to or will show you where somebody that you're looking for, you can find them. In the same way, there are pointers, children, are pointers to God and to the arena where you can find God. Children are a good lead to where God is happening. That's what I'm saying. When you see children, you know that there is God around there. That's why it says, let little children do what? Let them come to me. Because for them, they, are the, they, they have the children of the, the, the kingdom of heaven. It is so important that you bear this in mind. God uses signs to confirm his, to confirm his word. In some cases, Christ becomes the focus of the word of God and of the counsel that he wants us to adhere to. In Mark 16, 20, he says, And the disciples went everywhere and preached. And the Lord walked through them, confirming what they said by many miraculous signs. Can you see that? The disciples went everywhere. They were preaching. They were teaching. Guess what God did? God went ahead of them and he confirmed everything they were saying about him with signs and with wonders. That means God was showing the fact that everywhere you see the disciples, his children, they are representing him. And he showed up there for signs and for wonders. Amen? My prayer is that God will show around you. He will show up around you. He will show up in your situation, in your home, in your circumstances, in your, in your children, in your future, in your finances, in your health. He will show up with signs and wonders because he will come and he will tabernacle there in the mighty name of Jesus. We should not lose focus that the primary duty of man is to serve God. God wants us, he created us to serve him and to serve his purpose. What is his purpose? He created this beautiful earth and he handed it on to us to look after it. To cultivate it. To replenish it. To cause it to multiply. To manage it. And to make sure that everything remains in the beautiful state and perfection, the good nature of how he made them. That was the eternal purpose of God. 
But there's somebody who has an alternative plan, which is the enemy. The enemy doesn't want all that good for the things of God. He wants everything that says God to become bad. Signs and wonders will follow our children when we believe or when they believe. It is important for you to know that the only reason that signs and wonders will follow is not because of who you are. It's because you are aligning yourself to the one that is signs and wonders himself, which is God. And it is important for us in that Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13, Ecclesiastes 12, 13 says that the, that's the whole story. Here now is my final conclusion. Fear God and obey his, commandment, his commands for his is every, everyone's... This is everyone's duty. God will judge us for everything we do, including every secret thing, whether good or bad. God wants us to know that the accountability of our times, of our lives, is with him. And we are going to be in a position to give an account of everything that we find ourselves do in the name of Jesus. Luke 16, verse 17 to 18 also tells us that, but that doesn't mean that the law has lost its force. It is easier for heaven and earth to disappear than for the smallest point of God's law to be overturned. For example, a man who divorces his wife and marries another one else commits adultery, and anyone who marries a woman divorced from her husband commits adultery. This is telling us the fact that we are need to align ourselves with the dictate of what God wants us to do rather than do what we think or feel is right for us to do. Sign our wonders are promises of God. And when we play our covenant role of obeying God's principle, signs and wonders are inevitable. Psalm 71 verse 7. My life is an example of many, I mean to many, because you have been my strength and protection. That is it, when we align ourselves to God. And that is why we need to teach our children and help them to find their place in God. When we do that, we are ensuring that the signs and wonders that is inherent in God becomes part of their lively and daily occurrence. It is the desire of God for his children to raise godly seeds. It is the godly seeds that are meant for signs and wonders, not just any, any, any child. Godly seeds are meant for signs and wonders. Malachi 2.15 tells us that didn't the Lord make you one with your wife in in body and in spirit you are his and he what does he want godly children from your union so guard your heart remain loyal to the wife of your youth amen god wants godly children out of the union of a husband and a wife so he's saying to us make sure you protect that relationship protect that union because God wants a godly seed to come out of that. You're not just getting married to yourself because you lie like yourself, you love yourself. God wants you to reprocreate after your kind and then fill the earth and manage it and ensure that the world continues to become what God made it for in the first place. The exhibition of signs and wonders for our children is not limited to the four walls of the church. No, we expect our children to be signs and wonders in their schools, in the, in the society, in media, in education, in government, in entrepreneurship. Anywhere they go, they need to manifest that same spirit that was upon 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel when they were in Babylon. It was an excellent spirit that was upon them. And we see in Daniel 6.3, it says, Daniel soon proved himself more capable than all the other administrators in the high office and high office because of daniel's great ability the king made plans to place him over the entire empire hallelujah that is how god wants our children to stand out the god wants them to stand out and become an example in a positive way and how could that happen if we make them children of promises followed with signs and with wonders amen every sign and wonders have a niche and have a jurisdiction it doesn't just show up you plan for it it doesn't just happen it's something that you have to deliberately make to happen identify the area god has called your children and to make impact with them and guide them through it. The Bible says, train up your children in the way that he or she should go. And when they grow up, they will not depart away from it. Take time to study what is it that they are leaning toward. What is it that they are getting attracted to? And guide them through. Daniel 4.2 says, I want you all to know about the miraculous signs and wonders the Most High has performed for me. You should know the signs that God has performed for you and for your children. The same thing he did for you, he might not do for another person. But what he did for another person, he might not do in you. We all have our niche. We all have our specification. We all have our area of, you know, interest that's why we cannot be everything to ourselves we are going to need to depend on other people who are going to be something for us and we're going to be something for them that's how god made the world we are interdependent on ourselves nobody can have it all we should not miss the essence of signs and wonders our focus should be on christ and not on signs and wonders. Amen? Our focus should not be, I want to be a sign, and I want to be a wonder. And you begin to look at that, and begin to spring all around the city. You are going to fall short. Don't look at the signs. Don't look for the signs and for the wonder. Look for the one who can give the signs and the wonder. If you look up unto him, because he's the giver of the signs and the wonder, he will give you the sign and the wonder that he designed for you as a specific person. What many of us do is that we look at the signs and the wonder with our friends, and we cherish it, and we want it, and we try to want to copy them to become like them. If you copy somebody, you can only be a copy. You can't be an original. But if you look up unto God, he will show you your originality. He will show you how ingenious and how special you are. And when you become who you're supposed to be, then you become somebody that somebody wants to be like. Never look at the signs and the wonders of somebody else. Look unto the God of all signs and of all wonders. Mark, Mark 8, 11 to 12, says, When the Pharisee heard that Jesus had arrived, they came and started to argue with him. Testing him, they demanded that he show them a miraculous sign from heaven to prove his authority. Verse 12 says, When he heard this, he sighed. Trust Jesus. He sighed. Oh, so that's what you're looking for. He sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why do these people keep demanding a miraculous sign? I tell you the truth, I will not give this generation any such sign. When you look for sign, when you're trying to say that, that is all you are looking for. You're not really looking for God. God can read through it. God can figure you out. That's why God doesn't check our out, you know, our outer moods. He checks into our hearts the motive of what we're doing. 
Why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you, you know, going to church the way you're going to church? Why are you serving the way you're serving? Why are you this friendly? Why are you learning on the songs? Why is it that you are doing everything? Is it because to just show off that, oh yes, I'm doing it? Or you are genuinely doing it because you want to just be pleasing to God? God can read through it. These guys came and they want to test Jesus. But he could read through their heart. He knew that they were just trying to you know, test him. So he said, no, I'm not going to do that. In the same way, I want to encourage you. Have a genuine relationship with God. A genuine relationship to develop and be pleasing to him. A genuine relationship to relate with him and in him as God. God is willing to rough signs and wonders through our children, through your children. But we must teach them to ascribe all glory to God. Hallelujah. It is important to teach our children how they must Give glory to God. How they must see that it is God who is doing things through them. It is not in their power to do. If we get that into their mindset, we will be able to make them spring so high in the way that they will not depend on their abilities. Because in your own ability, what can you do? What can a man do? But it is God in a man that can do beyond the natural. Amen? Amen? It is important that Christians understand that signs and wonders is the proof of our relationship with God. Satan can also perform signs and wonders. You must take this and take this very seriously. If you go out on the street, you see magicians performing signs and wonders, making things to disappear and to reappear, causing tricks, hypnotizing people and using all sorts of forces and you know black magic to to do different kind of things but you must know that it is the bad is is the bad spirit is a demonic spirit that they used to do all these things so do not depend on the signs and on the wonders that's what we're talking about depend on the god the god who can do signs and wonders that, is, that are divinely and righteously carried out by his spirit. The source of the signs and wonders that is showing up in your life is rooted in God. 2 Thessalonians 2 9 says, This man will come to do the work of Satan with counterfeit power and signs and miracles. Can you see that? He was showing and depicting that this man will come and do signs and wonders in who? In the name of Satan. That is why we need to know that God Almighty is the inspiration over our children to do signs and wonders through them. 1 Corinthians 12, 10 says he gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophesy he gives something else, the, uh, someone else, the ability to, design, to, to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. Still, another person is given the ability to speak in unknown language, while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. God gives spirits-led signs and wonders into our lives. He gives them as gifts. We must teach our children about God and let them know that aligning with God and the kingdom principles guarantees signs and wonders. They will automatically follow us when the criteria are met. Hallelujah. Automatically, we don't need to run around for it. We don't need to you know, struggle for it. It will automatically follow us. In Mark 16, verse 17 and 18, he says, These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. Do you believe? Teach your children to believe. Teach your children to do devotional by themselves. Teach your children to pray by themselves. Teach your children to fast by themselves. Teach your children to know to go to church by themselves. 
Teach your children to know how to choose their friends by themselves and choose quality friends. Church friends that will not get them into trouble. Friends that will not in any way devalue their lives but will add inspiration to them. Teach your children to do all this and make decisive decisions about their life because it says these signs will follow them that believe. Teach them to believe. When you teach them to believe, you are teaching them to be able to lay hold on the better things of life. Act 14, 3 says, but the apostles stayed there a long time, preaching boldly about the grace of the Lord. And the Lord proved their message was true by giving them power to do miracles, signs, and wonders. Can you see that? Anywhere we preach, anywhere we talk about the goodness of God, God must show up to bring about signs and wonders that will acclaim to the fact that you are representing him. The importance of prayer in raising up our children cannot be overemphasized. The path of peace is paved in the place of prayer. Let us know how to enjoy ourselves and strengthen ourselves and encourage ourselves in the path of letting our children know how to latch on to the true spirit of God. Amen? It is important for us, and by God's grace, as we are drawing this teaching and this, I mean, this, this teaching to a close, not only tonight, but in this month, this, this Sunday, we're going to be teaching on how to plan for the prosperity of our children. How from the onset, when the children are not even talking yet, we can begin to plan their prosperity. It is important we get this right. If we get this right, it, you will know that we can help our children to attain great heights in life. God is the giver of children, and he can still provide us with children for those who are still trusting God for the fruit of the womb. We know that as we are calling upon him, as we are asking for him to give unto us, to add unto us, to enable us, to empower us, He's able to give us the very purpose and desire of our heart in Jesus' name. Children are gifts and miracles from God. God is interested in our children. I want to say to you, God is interested in your children. Never let anybody make you feel as though God is not interested in your child. It doesn't matter what the situation is with you and your child. God is interested in that child with you. And I know that the end of it will be joy. The end of it will be joy. God will bring about abundance of goodness, abundance of pleasures, abundance of, of greatness through your children in the mighty name of Jesus. Things might look as though it's not adding up or it's not exactly what it is supposed to be now. I want you to put your trust in God and always focus on God because his signs and his wonders is able to bring about from within you and for your children in the mighty name of Jesus. In the league of those who believe, signs and wonders follow them and the same will happen concerning you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to just know tonight as we draw to a close and ask that you can call upon God. You can mention that situation to God. You can say to him, this is where I am. This is what is bothering me. This is what my challenge is. This is, what, this is the lie the enemy has told me for long. This is the lie I have even believed. This is the way I've been thinking all along. But tonight you can make a change, a three 60 degree change and say God I'm ready to follow you and to follow your own direction I'm ready to yield to you and let you carry me along in the direction of your spirit amen and he will not disappoint you in Jesus mighty name we have prayed let's bow down our heads and pray Father God tonight we have heard how it is that our children are for signs and for wonders. But more than that, they are also signs and wonders in themselves. You give them to us, not because we desire them alone, but because you have an eternal plan and purpose for their lives and through their lives. 
That is why tonight we bring all of our children before you. And you know everyone that is listening to me and those who have heard and listened to this message that you have shared with us tonight. You know their circumstances. You know their situation. You know where they are burdened about their children. You know the burden that is weighing some of them down. You know the weight that some of them have been carrying and they have been troubled over the years, even now, in the past. You know the fear that they have for the future, for their children. You know it is that we are looking for what sort of future our children are going to live if things are going the way it's going. But we bring all this to you tonight because you are our burden carrier. We bring all this to you because the Bible says we should cast all our cares at the feet of Jesus. Tonight we have heard that our children are for signs and for wonders. Then how come our own story is different? Somebody is asking down there. Oh Lord God, I ask for your divine intervention. Upon the heart of that woman that is asking, upon the heart of that man that is asking, upon the, that, upon the heart of that man and that couple who are opening up their heart to you and say, God, when will you hear our prayer? When will you come true for us? When will you turn the tide against all this that has befallen us? Lord God, you are the God who hears and answers prayer. I ask, oh God, tonight, that by reason of this word that you have listened to, O oh God, let your signs and your miracle visit that family in the name of Jesus. Let your signs and your miracle come through the screen that your people are listening to me tonight and be a visitation in their home, in their circumstances, in their children, in their past, in their now, in their future, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be a divine encounter being wrought in their lives. Grant them a testimony. Grant them a sign. Grant them a wonder. Let it be, O oh God, that as they heard, you confirm that you have sent me and that we have shared and heard your word tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we give you praise. We give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Well, thank you for listening this night. I want to encourage you. Go back and listen to this message again and maybe one or two of the other ones that are on our YouTube page. And I know that God will not depart away from you. God bless you and have a wonderful evening.